Hi, my name is Lee, and I've been told I have a story to tell. So, I guess I'm here to tell my story, a little video at a time. I guess I could also start by telling you I have social anxiety, so these kind of things are not easy for me to do, but I think it might help me through all the things I'm going through right now and maybe even help somebody else feel like they're not alone. I'm 35. I'm a mother of three children. My oldest child's birth name is Brianna. And they're transgender and would like to be called Breezy or Bree. My second child, her name is Violet. She lives in Maine. I'm currently living in Florida. My youngest child, her name is Ivy, and she lives with me. She'll be 13 July 1st, 2021. Currently, I guess I could start out by current telling you what I'm currently going through. Um, in, in January, my grandfather, who adopted me and my brothers when we were young, I was 13 when I was adopted. He is my biological grandfather and legal father. He called me. Um, and heavily with dementia and I was living in Oklahoma I had just married my husband in October 2020 and so January 2021 my grandfather calls me sounding very scared and asked me to please move back home and help him <clears throat> So I told my husband I needed to do this. We all needed to come together as a family and help my grandfather. And so we started to sell off our belongings. Um, I had just lost my job due to COVID a couple months prior. and. So we were only running on one income at that point, and <clears throat> needing to move from Oklahoma to Florida. So we are selling off our things, having cyber yard sales, and then our stimulus check came in right around the time we were selling the last bits of our belongings. And my husband had to stay in Oklahoma. He was a surveyor and had, you know, an agreement with his boss to stay longer. So he was due to stay until May 1st of 2021. And so my daughter Ivy, myself, and our two dogs traveled in a U-Haul and drove to Florida. <clears throat> but before we were able to make our departure on February 12th, my grandfather passed away after being on a ventilator, non-COVID related, for the maximum of 14 days. After 14 days, they're no longer allowed to keep you on a ventilator. So I knew that my grandfather had passed away and I had to come and meet with my brother and I have three of them, two of them on this side of the family and I had to meet with my brother, Travis, my youngest brother, and we had to, um, you know, handle all the arrangements. And so on uh, 
March 1st, my daughter Ivy and I arrived here in Florida at the house I grew up in. It's very much in disrepair. Um, with a huge RV full of stuff. It was crazy. And um, it was very hard for me to be away from my husband at this time because we just get married. And he's my best friend. So we called each other every day. And he helped me get through, you know, dealing with the house and my grandfather's remains and all of the decisions that needed to be made. My brother also helped me a lot during the first couple of weeks that I was here. He stayed here. He's a marine station in North Florida. So he has some very serious obligations to attend to. Which is why I was staying here at the house to be able to take care of the estate and manage everything. And okay. And so It just became really difficult for me to be here um, alone. So my husband and I talked it out and he um, was able to leave work early and be here April 1st. So it was one month. Preparing the house, getting it cleaned up, getting it fixed, taking care of my grandfather. And then finally my husband showed up and that was a wonderful, blessed day. And we were kind of being quiet about us being here. We both grew up in this town and could have definitely lived the rest of our lives without coming back here. Um, but you know, family obligations, you've got to take care of your family, right? So that's why we came, to take care of my grandfather. And so, we were keeping it quiet. I'd only visited a couple of people. Um, one of them was his mom and he was waiting to visit with his other family until we became more situated here. Um, we were gonna have like a nice cookout. And um, April 19th, um, it was like any other day, very normal. We went and Picked up some yard plants from a family member's house and planted most of them. We signed up for Color Street together. My husband insisted I have something to, you know, focus some energy on and try to get my mind off all of the sadness that is involved in being here in this house and this town. Um, and so we signed up together and we had all of these plans on, you know, doing events together and he would even put some of the clear polish on his nails. By the way, these are some of the nail polish from Color Street. And And then it was late and we went to bed and said goodnight and fell asleep. And the next morning, my husband's alarm was going off and he 
he always had his phone on him, always. And so the alarm waking me up um, was like interesting at the moment, I thought. Like, oh, that's interesting. So I reached over and his phone was on the bed. And I, I turned the alarm off and then I um and then I saw my husband. He he had had I think a heart attack in the middle of the night. It fell off the bed. And so I saw my husband laying there not realizing um, what had happened. I tried to, you know, pick him up, but I, I couldn't. I'm kind of a small girl, and my husband was a very big man. And I realized that my husband had passed away. And, you know, called the police and everything. And all those things. And so... Today is May 16th, this was just not even a month ago, and it has been a very, very difficult uh, month, to say the least. Um, my daughter Ivy, you know, has taken it very hard, just like I am. She loved my husband very much. He was such a great dad. <laughs> he was not biologically my children's father, but every other aspect of being a dad, he was. <sighs> and then, at the end of last week, I found out that my children's biological father had a massive stroke and, and will not be surviving. He's totally brain dead right now. Um, and that's very difficult to deal with on a level that I wish my children were able to have a better relationship with him, and now they won't have that chance. So that is very hard as well. Um, so those are the things I've been dealing with for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and I just want you know, people out there going through, you know, some really tough times to know that, you know, you're not alone. We all have our own struggles, and we're all just trying to get through them. So, <clears throat> be kind to your neighbors, be kind to strangers. And love a little harder. Have a nice day.